Wonderful. I'm so glad we're live with Terry Cooper of the Franklin Village Boutique. Thank you for being here. You know, um, my husband grew up in Franklin and when we were young and married, you know, he used to drive through Franklin um, to try and find any house. He just always has wanted to live there. And it is the most spectacular place to live to have a store um, and I know you know that and you have just an amazing, amazing business called the Franklin Village Boutique. Um, and we're gonna talk about that today because I, I hope that a lot of people know about your store, but I'm guessing that some people watching today may not and hopefully will entice them, especially with what's going on behind you um, because that's just a, the tip of the iceberg um, for them to stop in. Um, and I will say this, please do not be deterred by the fact that there is a lot of construction in Franklin right now, but you know, you and I've talked about this. You can go down any street in Michigan in August, September, and there is a orange cone somewhere. So yeah, and in Franklin, there's about a thousand orange cones at the moment and a few and a few dump trucks so yeah here's my here's my advice to moms especially moms with little kids bring your kids you can have a day out in franklin you can eat go to the cider mill shop find gifts and your little ones are going to also not mind because you can show them such entertainment with these big trucks so that's how I look at construction right now. Other I hope that, everybody does. Well, I, I think they have to. I think you got to <laughs> pack. I think we all have to pack our patients in life right now. So packing our patients maybe with uh, a little construction is, is, is really not that uh, big of a deal. Um, give it, tell everyone a little bit about your background because it's, it's not retail. <laughs> it's nowhere near retail other than... Um... I've always liked to shop a little bit. So I, uh, I have a degree, a teaching degree, and I have a master's in counseling. And I have uh, a lot of experience in public speaking and motivational speaking from, I still do a little bit of professional development, but in, in my old life. So what happened was I mostly, I, I taught for a little while I was a counselor for a little while. And then uh, I started coaching cheerleading at Sterling Heights High School. And I was a cheerleader in high school in the 70s. And I- If you, if you ever meet Terry, you'll see that because she is a bundle of energy without coffee. With well, thank you. A, always with a big smile. It's, it's decaf. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I started coaching and that was where my- my, my strength was in motivating kids always. I was a camp counselor at Tamarack and I just, I just connect with kids. I still do. And so, and I'm very committed to education. So as I coached and got to know like kids and their families and their stories, I love, I love the human story. I decided to leave teaching and counseling, open a cheerleading camp. And, uh, and for 20 years, I ran camps and I, um, I had a real successful, competitively successful team. So um, I started speaking all around the country on, on how to connect with your kids because my, I took my Tamarack background and my camping background and it, in my counseling background, and I realized that the more you motivate kids to be good human beings and to show them that you care about them, then the better they become as a team and the more stuff you win. And if you like to win, I like to win. Um, that's the ticket. So I did that until uh, 2007. I ran my camps. They were called Cheer Michigan and all around just our state. And uh, my son at the time was seven. And here's just an, a little bit of Franklin history. So where Terry and Susie are now in Event Bliss, that was my Cheer Michigan office. Oh, is that unique? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. We took funny. the little Full circle. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, and then I moved out of there. Uh, but 
so when Ben was about, was he was seven and I had just turned 50. And so I decided I needed to just go in a different direction. So I took a little time off and uh, did some, still did professional development, mostly for school districts. And um, I one day walked into Franklin to return something to this little boutique and it didn't look anything like it looks now. And I fell in love with it. So I set about begging people I knew to make some calls for me to see who owned it and if we could maybe get it. Um, I, I, I do come across as uh, socially okay, but I actually am an introvert. I begged my sister to make the calls, begged my friend who's our accountant to make the calls. Everyone was like, <laughs> man up, do your own work. And um, finally, my friend, Michael Seltzer, who's actually a trustee in Franklin, I was talking to him at dinner one night and I said, I love that little boutique. I would like to have it. And he gets his phone out and called. Uh, one of the owners was Jane Roberts. Her son, Dan, is the police um guy here police what he's a um, commissioner is he the no he's the director of police what's that called anyway whatever it is great guy and um it just so happened that his mom was willing to talk to me so again i had someone else do the work michael did the work and i went in and talked to jane who i adore she was here la yesterday as actually and you know in a few months I had it. I loved when I had Cheer Michigan. I loved, I loved the business aspect of things. And I've always liked little independent stores, always have mm -hmm. patronized little stores over uh, the big box or the malls or anything and my whole life. So uh, it, it just was always in the back of my mind that it would be so much fun to do that. And so I did. And I wasn't done at 50. I was like, gosh, there's there's more so to do. much more to do. How did you change when you when you became the owner? How did you change the store? What what were the things that you? I mean, you obviously saw the store. What did you feel that you know that you were going to put your sort of mark on it? So, what I liked about it is what I like about Franklin. I, in my mind, when I walked in, I saw this cute little movie scene you know, the little village and mm -hmm. um, sleepless in Seattle kind of thing where you have this yeah. teeny little store and uh, everybody knows everybody. And however, it was a tired store and it needed a, an entire rebuild. And, and uh, Jane was right there with me, the former owner. She was encouraging me the whole way. It had a reputation for being, and, and this is probably the hardest thing we've not overcome yet. It had a reputation for being a store for semi-elderly women. Mm -hmm. And it isn't, but we it, it's been very difficult to break that, to break mm -hmm. through that. So um, we did a lot of advertising, but really it, it just didn't, it's, it's been a long road for that. We have our loyal, loyal customers. They are not in their nineties, by the way. <laughs> Um, but that's what it needed. It needed a younger look. It needed to speak to people of all ages and, um, and of all styles. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that because I think, I think it's very hard. Um, look, I think it's hard. I'm not originally from this community and I think this community itself one of the hardest things is changing someone's mind in this community about anything. It can be a store. It can be a personality. I, I say that all the time. Um, this That's is interesting. A yeah, this is a tough community. Um, and I, you know, my husband always says, you are from here. You've lived here. Your kids have now grown up here. But, um, uh, you know, I, I do think that this community can be, they can be tough and and put barriers on. And as a publicist and someone in marketing, I deal with that. And, and, you know, you and I just recently started, you know, working together. And so I hear you and you've, you, we've talked about that. And that's a challenge to say to someone, you know, other than a big billboard, 
down the highway or off mm -hmm. Northwestern Highway and say, hey, 90 year olds, you know, there's a cute sweater in there, but 40 year olds, 30 year olds, you're going to like a sweater, you know? Yeah. So, um, and restaurants, you know, go through that too. Um, and so as, uh, as someone in PR, you know, we have to message and we have to visually show and keep talking about it in this day and age, you know, we have the tools of social media and things like that. And, um, and, and those are the things that, you know, we utilize, but you still have those barriers. You have to get people to those tools to, to visually see it um, and, and get people in your doors, you know? Yeah. And, you know, are there things that you find um, are more helpful in that? Is it a word of mouth? Is it? So you know, I would say this, that um, when we first opened, and I kept the name. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I did think at the time that that would be the biggest draw I, because I didn't understand a, everything you just said. Mm -hmm. I just thought, oh, you opened the doors and you got this great thing and you know what you're doing and everyone's going to come, but they're not going to make a trip into Franklin mm -hmm. for just, well, our loyal customers do, but they're not like walking around and so what we found was whoever came in the next week, someone came in and said, my sister was here. My neighbor was here. My aunt was here. That is how we did it. Mm -hmm. um, and those loyal customers have been with us constantly, even yeah. through the shutdown. We've had a couple of shutdowns here, you yes, know, you have. and um, they have remained loyal. They've loved the changes. Mm -hmm. And, and as we go on, our actually our customer base has gotten, you know, younger and younger and younger, sure. we still appeal to like the hip olders, but, um, you know, we literally have high school students who love our jewelry and love our candles and our gifts. And then they look around and say, oh my God, I have to have that sweater too. Mom, can I have that sweater? Mm -hmm. um, and that's so really me, fun. Tell, tell us, because... You know, we, we can't see all of your store, but, you know, we can, we can see my most favorite candle, which I told you offline. Um, there probably won't be any left by the end of the week because you really do, you really do carry uh, that candle, everyone behind Terry. Um, the, this one? Yeah, this one. I think is one Shall of I the show best. it for you? Yes, yes. I, I have to tell you, this has been, they smell beautiful. Um, I, I'm just giving the plug right now. I think, you know, all my friends watching, um, you're about to get one because I just think this is one of the best housewarming gifts. I, I do. I think where a lot of us are going, um, the Jewish holidays are coming up, um, the holidays themselves are coming up. I think this is just a beautiful gift. I call that gift, the gift you don't buy yourself, but you should, you should treat yourself. It's in it. it I have to say, I, I never spend anyone else's money. It's it's not terribly expensive. And it's it's the kind of gift where I walk in there and I say, oh, I should buy that for myself. Oh. And then you buy it for your friends. But it's it's just a great, it's a beautiful candle. And every, I think that people don't buy themselves candles um, and things like that. And yet everybody loves to get something like that. So. Um, yeah, a lot of people get these, they come in for a gift, and they also get one for themselves. Yeah, so, so that, that is fun. I, I think that's a beautiful gift. I see the Michigan, Michigan State candles. So you have a lot of candles. We have um, lots of candles. Yeah, yeah, what, Mich what? Michigan State. It says Kalamazoo because it's Kalamazoo candles. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they're for college. They're just great. And they smell great. I think it's obsidian. But um, I don't even know what an obsidian is. So, but it sure smells good. And um, yeah, these are cool too. We have a lot of great candles. We carry a lot of patty wax also. And uh, well, there's a couple others. But anyway, yeah, great candles. Great and you fun. Carry, and you carry the, the beautiful shirt you're wearing is from your store. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and, and you carry jewelry, clothing, gifts. Um, so, you know, what's interesting is 
and I think that people don't realize that when you're shopping in Franklin, there's a lot of great boutiques that have, you, you can park your car and go store to store and find different, different things. And, you know, I, I, I say it's a walkable little village because you can park and you can, you know, go from little store to little store. Um, and you can, uh, well, first of all, the sidewalk should be poured sometime this week. So you really can walk through the village pretty soon. And be wonderful. Oh, yeah. Not too I, I want to I wanna say that many of the stores are women owned, which I, 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 I don't want to say all of them, but, you know, a good majority of them are women owned um, and have been there a long time. You have very, very loyal customers, which is wonderful, but I do love when I hear um, that your story just now that my sister was in the store and I had to come because I think, you know, anybody, and I'm such a proponent of shop local, um, that when you do shop local, you, you know, you walk in, there's a good chance you're getting the owner. You're getting the owner's relative maybe, but what you're really getting is great customer service. I mean, I can't tell you, you know, the, the times I have walked around the mall and I'm like, can anyone help me? Is there anyone here? You know, and it, it's just not the same. And so I really rarely do it. Um, you know, and it, it's not even that when I shop local, I'm looking for the owner. It's that I know that owner employed somebody and worked with them to have them treat you, the customer, just like a family member. You know, two things. One is, um, the people who are in Franklin, this is just for the first thing you said, uh, we are mostly women. There's a couple of men, Tangerine Wine is mm -hmm. Ed and he is phenomenal. Just right. a great selection of wine and oils actually. Um, but one of the things that we have in Franklin is a great loyalty to one another. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't have it, I may suggest that they go over to Zeban Mayor or Event Bliss because I love those girls. And Lisa at Deja Vu is, I mean, the best retail, uh, resale ever. Right. And, and we all support the grill, but um, we are, we totally cooperate rather than compete. It's a, it's a really, um, it's a nice family of businesses to be in. It really is. And I think that customers see that, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, probably made it a little easier um, to help one another out during this kind of crazy time. Oh yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> tell me a little bit um, how you're doing through, you know, COVID-19. I mean, what, what are your rules in your store and how are you handling everything? Um, you know, when it first, when, when COVID first started and we had to shut down and think about reopening, um, <laughs> it was so tough yeah. because we had already been through the vapor issue here, which we can talk about after if you'd like, but that's way over. But um, so we've been shut down before and we knew how to reach out, but I wasn't going to beg anyone to support us. That's not how I roll at all. Um, I'm going to make sure that everyone who works here, these are all my friends. Yeah, I know. Let me just go back to that point first. So everyone who works in our store, this is nobody's first career. And everybody's here because they want to be. They love, uh, uh, these people love clothing and love retail. I'm more of a behind the scenes, like I love your personal story, but I'm the one more likely to say, don't you have a black top at home where you don't need, you know, where they can coordinate people better than I can. And it, it's just a blessing for me to have who these wonderful women to work with. But anyway, um, so we 
started um, tapping into supplies, Jan Supply and other um, mm -hmm. commercial supplies, uh, cleansing supplies, I bought a, uh, <laughs> ran out and got this steamer, like this steaming closet that mm -hmm. sanitizes and blah, blah, blah. And the minute we get it set up, they said, don't bother with that. Just hang your stuff up for 24 hours. I mean, we just... We did everything we could. We're already clean. Everybody here is a clean freak anyway. So I'm a germaphobe. So there was hand sanitizer all over my store anyway. And we just made it easy for people. And I will say that it's shocking how many women customers came in who said, this is my first time out. Like they mm -hmm. trusted us. Yeah, that's, that's really amazing. all I yeah. needed to hear. I love yeah. that. I think everybody and, feels safe. We're a small store. It's not like we're going to have 30 people in here at once anyway. Right. And I and I think that's one of the really nice things about being able to be where you are in Franklin or, you know, and shopping local and, and being a part of that. And, and I have found that in the businesses that I've talked to is people do feel comfortable if they're going to go out. And, and there's been different levels of you know, from March to now, but as people Definitely. do go out, they, they want to go where they feel comfortable. And so, you know, that's why it was important for me to make sure we talk today, because I want people to go to Franklin, I want them to stumble into your store if they've never stumbled in. Um, you know, you sit right, um, right on Franklin Road, um, you know, and you're, you're sort of right across from the fire station. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, I want people to sort of stumble in and, and be curious, but also know that when they're curious, they're safe. I mean, they can be curious and, and feel like, you know, here's a woman owned business, you know, who um, forget being a germaphobe, because I think, unfortunately, we've all become that, you know, a little bit. But the truth of the matter is, it's your store. It's, you know, you really you know, take such great pride and you want people there. Um, and now people, you know, we're gearing up for the holidays, which are going to look different. Um, you know, when people say, oh, I'm not going to be open for Black Friday, you know, and all these things. But, you know, I say, okay, you know, great, don't be open, but here are places you can go and shop and mm -hmm. you can feel comfortable because, you know what, you don't need 400 people standing in line. Right, right. To shop. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, I sure that's don't. Not, it doesn't sound very, very fun to me. Um, are there, um, right now it's fall, you know, what are you seeing that people are loving um, in the clothing? I mean, I, I, I just picked this up last week from Event Bliss. I'm just told you I'm I'm heading over for some candles and I saw some cute jeans on your Instagram the other day, um, but I feel like you know sweaters are gonna be even at home, you know yeah, I, I you know, dress we, every day so and w I do too I get up every day and get dressed no matter what is going yeah. on, um, so we have every. This is interesting. So we did our first buy for fall in February and we got, we, it, it you know, we do it three times for each season. So right. it was kind of weird that we went to our favorite places that, that weekend in February and we got about maybe 50% of what we normally would get. Then this you, happened. You got, and, you got in 50% because of we the order. Oh, we ordered 50%. Okay. There okay. was no pandemic. At the, right, I mean, right, right. We did not know. So then I realized as soon as we got shut down and things started happening that we're not going back to buy anything else. So okay. we are at 50% of what we normally would have. Okay. It's just, we were lucky because it's the best 50%. And okay. then we did add a few like comfy, cozy, sweatshirty kind of things because loungewear is pretty big right now. Mm -hmm. But sweaters are huge in fall, whether yep. you're sitting at home or you're going somewhere. Yeah. So we have lots of sweaters, lots of jeans and leggings and jeggings and joggers and, you know, blah, 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 
everything's pretty casual. We got, we canceled everything, but I think maybe it was, I'm looking over there for four styles of dresses. And we had uh -huh. to work to cancel that because normally yeah. we dress a lot of people for the Jewish holidays mm -hmm. and then later for Christmas time. Sure. So we canceled a lot of holiday stuff too. Um, and kept a little bit because people are still, I mean, we have a few really beautiful dresses, casual and dressier, mm -hmm. um, but we're definitely much more casual than yeah. we've been. And, and a lot of the stores I've talked to kind of did a similar um, buy like you did. Um, and I think the holidays will be interesting where if families can get together, I hope they dress up because I think it yeah. makes it special. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I kidded, my, my oldest son is still home and I said, well, you know, it's the Jewish holidays and we're gonna Zoom. And he's like, yeah. And I said, he's like, are you looking like I'm gonna put on a suit or something? <laughs> I said, oh, sure, aren't you gonna put on a suit? You know, like, it's like, I don't have a suit home. When I came home for the pandemic, a suit was not on my mind, but you know. Right, right. I, I mean, I do hope by December and, you know, things like that, um, it, it's funny because in the summer I would put on a, a skirt, a summer skirt or a dress and come downstairs to my home office. And my husband was like, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm dressed. I, you know, I want to feel good about myself. You know, if I'm going nowhere, I'm like, I want to be dressed. I want to feel you know, like I'm going <laughs> For the first 15 years that I had Cheer Michigan, it was out of my home. So I had a home office. And I got up every single day, mm -hmm. got dressed, put my makeup on. I was alone there. I mean, once in a while, right. someone would come into work, but that's who I am. Yeah. And, and we're, we all feel kind of lucky that we can still wear our slightly dressier clothes because we get to come to work. Right. Right. No, I, I do. I think you feel better about yourself. I mean, some of my friends laugh at me because, you know, I, ha you know, I have a lot of retail clients and they're like, you know, you're so supportive talking about it, but you're supportive about buying. And they're like, where are you going? I'm like, who cares where I'm going? <laughs> right, I gotta walk by, right. I'm like, I gotta walk by a mirror. I mean, I don't want to scare yeah. myself. <laughs> exactly. So, no, I do. I think, you know, I do. I think as women, we should feel good about ourselves and and you know our kids are on zoom and i think it's a good lesson you know i i actually got this lesson from my mom among amongst many things but um you know my mom was that way my mom was always get up get dressed get going and you know you'll feel better and i always laugh i was on bed rest twice with my boys and got dressed i would that was the thing <laughs> in the morning i would shower and put on maternity clothes. Now they were comfortable, but I didn't wear even the loungewear that, I mean, I guess I wish the, the loungewear back then existed, but I actually had like knits on, you know, from right, right. leggings. Like, I, I mean, I look cute, uh, you know, for a pregnant person <laughs> on bed rest. Um, but did I, um, I, I always like to ask if there's anything, you know, is there um, any kind of promotion going on or sale or anything right now or coming up because I definitely want to talk about that. So if, right now the fall stuff is just coming in. So no, it's not discounted. Not. <laughs> Our summer and spring stuff. And there's a lot left of it because that was a full buy. And then we were shut down for three months. We're still going to carry that at 60% for at least till the end of the month, if not a little longer. At that point, uh, a lot of it will go to domestic abuse shelters and um, programs, career programs for women. And then we just leave a little bit back there because everybody likes a bargain. So we like to have something for them, but it's more important for me to give it. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I mean, I love that you also, you know, and, I'll, and many of the stores in Franklin do the same and are philanthropic, but I have to encourage people, look, we are going to travel this winter everybody. So, you know, if you want to get a good, you know, deal on some of your spring, summer, if you didn't buy, you know, and you want some new 60% off, I mean, come on. Yeah. It, and I it's mean, beautiful stuff. It's just, um, 
you know, we'll ring it on the register and the customer's just so happy and I'm yeah. crying like this is awful. <laughs> but know. But it's there and we want people to enjoy it. And it's beautiful. I think we did a great job with it. And there's great stuff now for fall. Um, and, you know, we will get back. I just, yeah, I'm an optimist for ever and ever and ever. And I, we will get back. It may not be for a while, but um, we're all just hoping we'll be here when we get back. Well, I think, I think that's very true. And I think that the loyalty that you have from your customers will will sustain you but i also think that you're doing business right and that's what people notice and you know the the trick is and the hard trick is hanging in there while you're doing business right absolutely and you know you know right now it's sort of knowing how to buy for this time and I say this a lot to when I work with clients, our expectations of one another working together too have to change. You know, you know, I try and help people with their their sales goals and their their, you know, what that looks like. And we're not talking about nine months ago what it would have looked like. We have to adjust that too. And it's all different, you know. And um, but I think that your loyal customers are also going to say, you know, I do want a sweater. I do want to feel good. I'm going to go in now. The truth is maybe that customer used to buy three and they can buy one now. And so there, therefore, I talked to someone the other day and, you know, he's in one of the hardest hit businesses. And he said, um, I've looked at what my loss is going to be and I'm good with it. And I kind of took me a minute. And what he was saying is I... I know where I should have been, but now this is what my loss is for right now because I'm, you know, I'm working this hard to only make it this. For you know? sure, you for know? sure. So, um, and he's a Franklin resident and loves Franklin. So I, you know, um, I, I think that, you know, we really want um, our Franklin residents to really support Franklin, talk about it. Cause I think, that loyalty in itself is important as well. Um, I know my husband still drives through on his way home all the time. <laughs> I, I always know when he's a little late. I'm like, you took that, That's you where took you that want. drive through scenic, didn't you? Like you didn't just come right <laughs> home down Northwestern Highway. You know, he, he takes that drive. I love it. Um, so, it's uh, homey and comforting here. It's just, it is. it's so beautiful. It's the village. It's the village, the town, the town that time forgot, as, I, as we say. Terry, thank you so much. Um, I'll be over. I, okay, I, good. I'll, I'll be over for some of those candles. Um, you, you don't share my secret since my husband's <laughs> not on, he's not on any social media. So any of my shopping that I talk about online. It's just between us. No, it, that and anyone. All watching, of us. But, <laughs> right? Anyway, have an amazing day. Thanks for spending time you with do me. The same. Really Thanks so much, Sari. Appreciate All right. it. Talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.